Hey guys, I was wanted to share this really quick just to kind of give you a tour of something I've been working on on Roll20. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Zombie World is a new PTBA game that's kind of PTA based game that's coming out uh, sometime pretty soon. It just funded on Kickstarter, but it's Magpie Games and they're sort of already moving along. Uh, they've got, uh, as soon as it funded, it's actually before it even funded it, it they sent out um, sort of the materials um, in PDF format for the game. For those of you who don't know, um, the project is a PTBA game that's card based. So all the resolution mechanics are, are card draws. Uh, you don't try to get, um, you're not rolling and adding numbers together like you would be with most PTBA games. Uh, you're rating in a skill or whatever is how many cards you can draw and you just sort of pay attention to the highest roll. In that way, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, uh, Blades in the Dark or something like that where you're rolling multiple dice, but you only really care about whatever the highest roll is. That's kind of how uh, the resolution mechanics work, but everything in the game is based on cards. So as you're building your enclave where your survivors of the ongoing apocalypse are at, um, you're sort of picking from the advantages that um, the enclave has as you're figuring out what other survivors might be there you're picking from decks of survivors other survivors besides yourself as you build your character you're drawing your um your your past and your present and your your trauma that you've gone through and stuff like that again from decks of cards all that kind of stuff so uh the question that i see pop up every so often is you know i and like a lot of folks, I do most of my gaming online anymore. It's really hard for me to, you know, get together and actually do something. So, you know, we do a lot of gaming on things like Roll20 or Hangouts or you know, Skype or whatever. And how can you facilitate this thing if it's all, it's going to be a beautiful product when it comes out. Because the whole thing's going to come in a box, beautiful cards, you know, everything to play the game is basically going to be in this box, you know, laminated, you know, uh, player cards that you can write on with a dry erase pen because these guys are going to die. Oh my God, they're going to die. But you can create new characters really quick by drawing the cards. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a great idea. How do you play online? Um, how, how can you make that work? So I just wanted to kind of show, I did a little bit of work on it. I was talking with one of my players from a mask game. Um, you know, I got great love for Magpie just based on masks. So I was give this thing a try. Um, but I was talking with one of my friends from my, one of the guys from the masks game and he's like, yeah, you could probably just make a couple decks and roll 20 and you'd be fine. Well, he says that and, and then, yeah, I spend the rest of the evening like doing screenshots and, you know, pulling cards together and trying to build the decks and the logic for the things and have the, each deck behave the way that particular deck is supposed to behave in the game. Because some of them you reshuffle right away. Some of them you don't reshuffle until certain cards are drawn. Uh, things like that. So how do you get all that stuff to behave? And how do you get a character sheet together? All that kind of stuff. So I just want to talk about that real quick. Real quick. I've already been talking for like five minutes. So uh, let me flip over. I mean, you could do lots of weird stuff in Real 20 that seems initially kind of challenging. Mountain Witch isn't really that hard. Uh, don't rest your heads on a simple thing. Uh, dice mechanic wise, it's it's got some complicated stuff going on in there in terms of the the way the dice pulls work and, you know, what which thing comes out dominant and managed to figure that kind of stuff out. So zombie world, you know, I'll be able to sort it out. So I'm going to get in here and take a look at this deal. Um, most of it boils down to two things. You, you need to kind of um, cobble together the, the cards. And how can I... Let me just see if I can switch in some of them. Yeah, okay. This, this will work a little bit better. Um... You need to be able to put together the card decks and you need to be able to figure out a character sheet that's actually going to work and also kind of an enclave sheet, but the enclave sheet's really not that big of a deal. Um, so I want to take a look at a couple things here. First of all, we've got like, you don't really even need the bite deck. Right away, all you really need are, is your, um, where can I hide? I'm going to hide the bite deck. All you really need is your popula population card right off, deck right off the bat because you're going to be you know, sort of populating your enclave and start, you, you, you start off with your enclave. So I made up an enclave sheet. This is just an image uh, of the enclave stuff. 
and you know what the spending gear with the forging stuff but that's not real that's just more of a, of a reminder as what the stuff's supposed to look like and then we have like a nice fillable table or whatever where we can track what the population of the enclave is what surroundings we pick scarcity advantage that sort of stuff and then uh while we're working on the enclave we can switch over to the actual enclave board where we can take a look at uh, in the, before the kicks before the Kickstarter materials come out, there's only two enclaves you can pick from the prison and the hospital, and then you can pick some the advantages and population and surroundings and stuff. But that's kind of on the checklist. Uh, the advantages you kind of want to know mechanically what they're going to do, so they have their own cards and stuff like that. So it's really simple. Anybody who's in here can just well, I want the armory and I want the generators. You know, you can just drag that stuff and put it up where you want it. Uh, while everybody's just sort of working on it. So that's, you know, we build the Enclave. And while that's happening, somebody is sitting over here in the actual Enclave character sheet and making a note of the stuff that we're doing. So there you go, Enclave done. Now we have that as a reference. Easy peasy, off we go. Um, character generation is kind of fun. Uh, you go into, well, official link. So, Let's say we got our population is done. We're not using that right now. We can hide that population. You can only see really easily see three decks at a time, so I kind of keep it down to that. So we want the um, decks for the present, past, and trauma for the characters. Shuffle these guys up here, and we're going to start working on characters for people. Now, for this, you got to kind of realize that I'm not a player and I don't have a player in here, which is fine. Um, so we're back over here. We got our we got our main board up. We're going to start working on characters. Everybody gets their little character sheet. I've got an example dude up here. And I just took, um, you can, if you're at a pro level on uh, Roll20, you can just kind of go through and customize your own character sheet. So I grabbed one. I've, I've built a couple. I've authored a couple for Roll20 and gotten them approved and stuff like that for some fate hacks and stuff I've done in the past. So I grabbed those some templates I felt like I could work with and just gave them, you know, this adjustable stats kind of thing. Now, if I wanted to get fancy, I could have all this stuff add up. I don't really care. Um, but you can just sit here and you've got four stats. They're pretty set. You just decide how they're going to be. The points are going to be distributed. Uh, for the sake of reference, I, I explain what the stats are, what they do over on the side. Um, you put your allies up underneath your name here just because I had a field available. So I put the information from the character sheet um, over here next to the thing so you can see how you direct your allies. Um, since stress is sort of tracked nicely down here on the bottom, I also put the what the suffering serious harm stuff looks like. Um, and then your identity cards. Now, the way this would work, obviously, uh, the way the, the game is set up initially, uh, you don't, no, nobody knows your uh, past or trauma when you first start. All they know is what your present is. So on your character sheet, which people will be able to see, uh, all you'd have out there is going to be your present. And the past and trauma would live as cards, face down cards, attached to your character that nobody can see. So that's pretty straightforward. It's really, it's not very complicated. They said there are secrets and things that you know that you can, you know, have to, uh, you can't reveal your past except in certain very specific ways. And when you do, then you get benefits from that. So that's great. And they sit there in your hand, kind of reminding you to, to you're going to want to do something with that. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to modify these. I'll get rid of, I don't need past. I don't need trauma right now. Um, so all I have right now is I know my presence is a survivor. Let's say that all that's all I got. Anyway, so character generation is pretty straightforward. Um, we got a new guy. Let's pretend this is my new guy. And I'm going to deal uh, my present. I get to deal two cards. And I'm going to send it over to myself. And my past, I deal one. The reason you get two present cards is you get to pick uh, from the two that you like. Um, and we'll do one trauma. And you get to you don't get to pick your trauma and you don't get to pick your, your past, but you do get to sort of pick what your role is going to be currently in the enclave. Um, so now 
me secret player I can look at these things and go and see what I got so I've got uh, I've got the enforcer cool I can be the enforcer for the thing um, I get a bonus to my savagery when you physically intimidate someone into obeying your get a clear stress when you physically intimidate someone into obeying your boss's orders or the prophet you believe the apocalypse was brought out by the world sins. So, and this lets you clear stress when you get a new convert or punish someone for their sins, stuff like that. I can pick which one I want, whichever one I don't want. I'll just, I can, uh, it, it, the way they're set up here, they deal out face down. So I can still go, I don't want this one. So let's just, we're just going to delete this one. And if I want to let people know that I'm going to be the enforcer, because this is something everyone's going to know. They need to know what your rep is. You can sit out here and then flip the card, and everyone's like, ah, enforcer, yes, very, mm, yes, very, very nice. Um, then you would go up to your character sheet and actually update that and take your bonus to your savagery and make sure that move is in there for the clearing the stress, all that kind of good stuff. And it's done. What people don't see is the past and your trauma. That's a secret. Co uh, the GM can't see it. Nobody can see it. And that's kind of cool because then you're really kind of the pressure's on you to get that stuff revealed because no one's going to know otherwise. So I used to be a coach. I like that. I'm, I'm now I'm an enforcer, but I used to be like a high school, you know, like gym coach or something like that. It's pretty cool. Um, so there's some stuff that happens there when you reveal and under what specific circumstances you can reveal it. And uh, then your trauma, how you, and uh, this guy goes together pretty well. An enforcer who's controlling, who used to be a coach. Yeah, yeah, I could play this guy. That'd be fun. Anyway, when I close that down, people just see that I've got those cards, and you can actually accumulate multiple traumas, so that's kind of interesting too. And the and the the character sheet that I built is is able to do that. You can just add more trauma cards um, as you build up stress. When your stress max is out, it goes back down to zero, and you pick up another trauma until you're you know basically a useless uh, you know ball of of, emo of all my emotions. Um, these cards only really come out during character generation. So, okay, cool. We're done with those. Hide, hide, hide. And then we're back to uh, what we're going to need most of the time, the bite and the survivor deck. Um, survivor deck's the one you draw from like 98% of the time for most stuff. Uh, and these I set up to deal face up. So if I have a four in something, I get to go and draw like four cards and just sort of take the best one, which, hey, guess what? I get an edge, which is that seven to nine, that luscious seven to nine mixed result. Um, that's my best result. Even with a four, the best I can do is a mixed result, man. So it's good to know that the card draws are really sticking with my normal ability with dice. That's pretty consistent. Once I'm done with all those, I get back in there and I can just uh, shuffle that deck again, which it should do. Bite cards are a little bit different. When bad stuff happens, you draw a bite card. Again, these things come up face face up. This, this particular deck, you don't reshuffle um, until, so what's the bad thing? Something breaks, um, something else breaks. Oh, nothing goes wrong. That's nice. And you just keep drawing from this thing and not refreshing it until the single bite card comes out. Um, so things just keep getting worse or, you know, sometimes nothing happens. But eventually, somebody going to die because the bite just means you're dead. Um, I, I had a pretty good one on this one because I haven't had a bite card yet. It must be all the way down at the bottom on this guy. It's pretty terrible. Oh, really? Seriously? There we go. You are bitten. At this point in time, I can, uh, and it tells me, that was actually the last card in the deck. Man. So I can recall everything and shuffle as I recall, and boom, everybody's out there. So that bite deck just kind of goes up. But you can make all the decks behave how you want them to behave. So um, those automatically deal face up. Uh, the, the character cards automatically deal face down because uh, you don't want people seeing those. Uh, so basically, you make it. Uh, you can make it. You can make it behave. It's pretty cool. I think so, anyway. Um, the main takeaway, though, is that this is absolutely doable in in Roll Twenty. I'm not, and more to the point, I'm excited to do this in Roll Twenty. Don't get me wrong, guys. I love masks. I'm going to be playing masks forever because 
I mean, I already have. It's like 51 sessions we've been playing. But uh, pretty psyched to try out Zombie World. I think it's pretty good for one-shots. I'm also looking forward to doing, uh, because you can put together characters so fast, put together an enclave, and then you draw a fate and see. Oh, I wanted to draw. I should mention the fate deck, too. That's pretty cool. Um, so the fade deck is sort of like stuff that happens. So you can use that to map out relationships between characters. Um, so the two of you have an intimate relationship. Why are you keeping it hidden kind of thing? Or you can draw it and read the other way around. So I'm going to, I'm going to advanced. I'm going to flip it horizontally and I'm going to flip it vertically and I can flip it around. And that's, you use those cards to go, okay, uh, time has passed. For the enclave what what what's gone wrong or at the beginning of the game you start you kick things off by drawing one of these things take a look at it. so the cards are weird because they're you know you got to read them upside down that you think oh digitally that's going to be a real pain in the butt you just kind of like turn your head around upside down and look at it now you can just flip stuff around and it behaves so that's fine too um we'll just recall that and shuffle it and off we go so this was a lot of you know screen captures of a pdf or whatever i'm sure there's probably some other nicer way I could have done it too but whatever um, this was shipped out to the people who were backers I'm not distributing it to anybody I love magpie I'm giving them all my my ducats for for their projects and stuff like that so don't steal stuff from people don't be don't be shitty um, this is put up here for the same reason that the stuff was shipped out to the uh, backers so they could print it out or make copies of it or whatever so they could run their run games before the Hard copies came out, and that's what I'm using it for. This stuff isn't getting distributed or anything like that. But I can show people how, who have the materials, I can show them how the, I can, it's easy for me to show you how the character sheets go together. I can send the HTML and the CSS files. If you're a pro people person, you can make a custom character sheet that'll work. And then you just have to kind of cobble together the decks, you know. Um, and there's probably ways to do it that aren't, probably even less work than what I did. Well, yeah, I managed to do everything hard. It got a lot easier by the end because I figured out ways I was doing it were stupid. But it's doable is the main thing. This is a this is a this is a manageable thing. And it's exciting, man. I want to try this thing out. I want to I want to I want to try out these disposable zombie fighting sales clerks and stuff like that. The only thing that makes me a little sad is uh, this is the base game that came out for the backers right now and the expansion stuff that they have um, that has been unlocked is not yet available and that makes me a little bit sad because one of the survivor companions that you can have is a dog and I want a dog like basically I want every character that I ever play in zombie world to have a dog companion um, and I don't have them yet so so soon 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 I'll have that dog soon I will but not now. Now, I just have zombie world. I just have zombies. Maybe I'll get a zombie dog. Anyway, I uh, hope this is a help for anybody. Uh, again, if you want to know anything about this or how it goes together, just uh, hit me up on G+. I'll see if I can help you out. Or on uh, YouTube if you just want to comment. Anyway, talk to you later, guys. Have a good one. Bye.